Here are a few more keyboard modifiers that you can use to resize and scale things in InDesign. I didn't cover these in my demo, but I think you should experiment with them. I specifically wanted to talk about these because I want to talk about the difference between scaling something and resizing something. Most InDesign users will be able to select an object. They'll see the handlebars on the outside of the object and be able to click and drag them to resize them. However, resizing and rescaling, resizing and scaling are just two different things. If you just grab a shape and you click and drag the corner, you're, you're going to change the size of it, but you're not going to change the proportion of the components of it, if that makes any sense. So if you had a two inch by two inch square and it had a two point stroke on it, and you were to drag the square and make it bigger until it was four inches wide, the stroke on the square would still only be two points thick. So the bigger the item gets, the thinner the stroke appears, and the smaller the item becomes, the fatter the stroke appears. But the stroke itself has not changed at all. It was two points, and if you resize it, it'll always be two points. There are some ways to make sure that when you resize something, it looks better. So if you press the shift key as you're resizing, you'll constrain what's called the aspect ratio. It's the ratio between the width and the height of your object. So as the width gets bigger, the height gets bigger, but it's still only constraining the aspect ratio. It's not scaling, so that two-point stroke is still only going to be two points. However, if you add the command or the control modifier as you're resizing something, you will start to rescale it, which means that everything will get bigger or smaller in proportion. So if you have your two inch by two inch square that has a two point stroke and you drag it and make it a four by four inch, it's twice as big, the stroke will become a four point stroke so that the proportion between the thickness of the stroke and the size of the square will always be in ratio. So the bigger it gets, the fatter the stroke gets, the smaller it gets, the thinner the stroke gets. There are many ways to select and use color in InDesign, including the color picker, the color panel, Adobe color themes, and the swatches panel. Using color swatches via the swatches panel in InDesign is one of the easiest ways to automate a digital design. Swatches can be saved, deleted, shared, loaded, etc. The most important thing to remember is to use them, and we should already be in best practice of using swatches since we've already covered that earlier in this semester. Once a color has been selected, use the new swatch icon at the bottom of the swatches panel or the new color swatch option via the options flyout menu to save the color as a swatch which can be then reused over and over again throughout the design. As an added benefit, modifying the saved swatch modifies all instances of it in the design. And so by using a swatch, you are linking um, multiple things to a common base being the color. And if you were to modify that base, making it green or changing the green to be yellow, everywhere you've used it will also change. And we should already know that since we did an exercise earlier in the semester involving that. For a refresher to create a color swatch, you can select the color any way that you know how. I like to use the color picker to select the color. Once it is in my fill or my stroke color, in this case it's the fill color and whichever color is in the foreground of the fill and stroke, um, you can select the new swatch icon at the bottom of the swatches panel to create a new color swatch from that color. You'll see it will automatically be named with the percentages of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black if you're using a process CMYK color. If you would prefer, you can always hit the option fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the panel and then choose new color swatch. So you can see in my example here that I started a design and I was making a sign that says limited time only sale. I am making peripherals. So I have a flyer and maybe I have a sign that I'm going to hang in the window and I have a chart that has the hours that were going to be open for the sale. And I have maybe a three page document in InDesign or Illustrator really um, and I'm using green. But after I created it with green, I decided I didn't like the green. I wanted something brighter, and I wanted to try yellow. And so I quickly switched all yellow in the design, or sorry, all green in the design to be yellow. And then maybe I didn't like that, so I went and tried purple. And then I really didn't like that, so I said I'm going to go back to yellow. Um, as long as I have saved my swatches via the swatches panel, I can easily test out multiple different color variations by editing a color swatch. I just double clicked on the green swatch. I changed it to be the yellow that I wanted, and then I could see immediately what the results would be. And then I want to know, I know this is an InDesign class, but 
as you start to get more advanced in your Adobe software, you should be getting more advanced in all of the programs. And so this is a best practice in general for using color swatches. But if you use color swatches in the same way in Illustrator, um, by default, it, they don't behave the same way. You must check the global colors option on your swatch dialog box when you create your color swatch. And if you use global colors in Illustrator, they work exactly the same way as I'm showing you the swatches in InDesign.